Welcome back to 1834 Restoration House. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do is take you around the house and property and show you some of the things that we've worked on in the past year and a half, and then we'll tell you how they're working out for us. But before we do that, it's important that you have other interests besides just restoration. And so I'm going to show you a couple things that we have working on the sidelines that you probably haven't seen. Today's program is sponsored by the generous support of our patrons. Your support helps to further our historic preservation efforts. For more information, visit patreon.com forward slash 1834 Restoration House. I've been dabbling with vintage stereos for many years now. This is an old Heath kit tube amp stereo and it probably dates back to the early 60s. So this thing is about 50 years old and I had a customer contact me asking if I could do an electronic refurbishment on it. And so that's what I'm doing. It doesn't work, and so I'm replacing all of the electronics to bring it up to modern specs because 50-year-old electronics really don't sound very good. But I've done a couple of these already, and I can tell you that having refurbished it makes a huge difference in how good it sounds. But that's not all. You see, this place is turning into a used amplifier lot. We've got this one on the bench. Inside this box is another customer's amplifier that's also waiting for the same treatment. It too will be completely electronically refurbished and then sent back. Inside this box is my personal amp, which I inherited from my grandfather. Now the thing didn't work too well when I got it, and so I went through it, completely refurbished it, and today it sounds fantastic. And here's number four. So I had a customer contact me, and he says, Mike, I have absolutely had it with this thing. I've had three different stereo technicians look at it. Nobody can fix it. I can't fix it. I've had it. I don't want to sing anymore, but I don't, don't want to throw it away. So would you be interested? I said, sure. And so I picked it up really cheap. He, he sent it here and I haven't yet worked on it. It's completely dead and I don't know what's wrong and haven't had time to look at it. But here it is. Like I said, this place is like a, a, a Heath kit service depot. <laughs> I don't know why, they just seem to find me. But all four amplifiers look identical and they're gonna work. The room upstairs that we're working on, and we're stripping the paint off and refinishing the wood and making it look all pretty, is going to be my sewing room. And this is part of the sewing stuff that we have. And on the other side, we'll show you what projects I'm actually working on because several people have asked. So let me show you what I've been doing. This is the rest of my sewing stuff. As you can see, it does literally take up half of this office space. The other half is our desks and our editing system. And we'd like more space for the actual office stuff. So that's why all of my sewing stuff is going to be going upstairs in that room once we get it finished. <laughs> the project I've been working on is this old fashioned dress and it's a work dress kind of thing. I do want to make an apron for it still and I am making a vest and that's the vest. So we'll get it all put together and then the vest will really help keep me warm in the winter time because the top part is not insulated really well whereas you have many layers on the bottom half so that's the reason for the vest. As you can imagine I'm very excited to get a whole sewing room. But we didn't come here to talk about vintage stereo amps and fabric and sewing projects. We came to talk about our Victorian house. So here it is. This house is 122 years old and we've lived here about a year and a half. We've done a lot of things here and that's what we're gonna talk about today and show you some of the things we've done in the past and how they're working out for us. So how do you like living in a Victorian? It's been a year and a half. We've never had a Victorian before. I love it. It's kind of different. It is kind of different. There are doors everywhere. Yes. <laughs> every entrance, every hole has a door. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. But it's really nice because you can keep some rooms cool and some rooms warm. 
I also love the fact that this house is very solid. Earlier this year, we had a bunch of bushes here that were kind of like half dead. They looked scraggly, they looked really old and worn out, and I really wanted to take them out and put new ones in. But as we took those bushes out, we discovered that there is a little brick planter down here. And we also discovered there's a water catchment behind it. It was all buried under quite a bit of soil. So we decided to rebuild it. And it is a couple bricks higher, we think, than it originally was, but I think it'll look really good. And it was a lot of fun to be able to put something back when you suddenly discover it. So it was a much bigger project than we intended, but it looks great. Next spring is when we're gonna put more flowers and fill it in a little more, and it'll be beautiful. I'm looking forward to that. One of the first things we had to do even before we could move into the house, was put a mailbox out here. Now, previously the mailbox was on the house and a lot of these houses had mailboxes on the house, but over time, the local postmaster has been making people put boxes out of the street because they want to be able to just roll up, drop it and go without having to go up to the house. Understandable, it's more efficient. So Jeannie looked online and found this really nice Victorian style mailbox. And so we dug a hole, put a foundation in, mounted the box, and it's been working great ever since. Another thing we did was uncover this mystery structure. You can see the ground where the overgrowth was. It's quite a bit all over, and it's trying to grow back, so we keep cutting it down and it comes back, and we'll keep it maintained, but this mystery structure is pretty interesting. So that was a lot of fun to find that. We also cut a whole bunch of overgrowth and branches so that we could mow this area and cleaned all this up. So it's looking a lot better. Hopefully this winter we'll be able to put in a garden. Every now and then you might come across a Victorian that still has a Victorian electrical system. This is the case here at this house. We have old cloth wiring, knob and tube, fuse boxes, uh, knife switches and disconnects and all kinds of weird stuff like that that is no longer used and uh, is no longer safe, nor was it ever. But the house did receive a partial upgrade back in the 1960s where it received a new breaker panel. But by today's standards, this thing is positively antique. It's probably safe, yes, but it lacks a lot of the modern conveniences and safety features that the newer ones have. So. We set out to fix that. What we did was we went down and we bought a brand new breaker panel, like that, a meter box, and all the pipes and fittings and junction boxes that we would need to set this thing up. We used to have an overhead wire that came over here, down a weather head, into a pipe, and into this breaker panel. But the utility company said that they would be willing to run brand new electrical service out here and up us to 100 amps, sorry, 200 amps. And not only that, but they would put it underground. That's perfect by me. So they went ahead, trenched in a whole new electric service over here, came up into this new meter panel, and then they hooked us into here. So what I did is I took the feed that was feeding this panel and I moved it over here. So now the new electrical system is feeding the old electrical system and it's also feeding the new electrical system, which is pretty small at this point. But it's a good start. We were able to pull out some really sketchy looking wires. I mean, I'm talking ones that had no insulation left and they were just almost shorted out. We pulled some of those out. No doubt there may be some more of that left in there, but it's a good start and it lays a foundation for a good solid electrical system in the future. All this space back here is wide open and it's absolutely wonderful space for a future garden. Thing is that garden's gonna take a while to build because it's gotta be built like Fort Knox almost. I don't want the deer or the raccoons or the squirrels or anything else to get into it. It'll be a little while before we get it built and I'm hoping to put some fruit trees out here too. When we redid the electrical system, we decided to strip the paint and put on some new paint. 
only this time we used a historical recipe of linseed oil paint to see how that would work out. Well, as you can see, it's got black smears all over it. And we think that might be mildew, which seems to have an affinity for linseed oil. So we're going to have to revisit this and figure that one out. Back here is where a dog run used to be. It straddles both properties. So we took out our half and it was a big project, let me tell you. We had to use a tractor to pull these posts out, which had like five layers of metal wiring across them. And they were all intertwined. And it was a heavy duty project, but we got it taken care of. Got everything out. This water pipe that you can see, it doesn't go anywhere and it's not really connected to anything. We found the other end over there and it goes nowhere. We'll take it out later. We may very well have had the ugliest deck in town. Right now, it's probably not the nicest deck in town either, but it's way better than it was. So what we did is we scrubbed this thing with deck cleaner and got all that old dead wood off of here, made it look really good, and then went over it with a couple of coats of deck preservative. And we also added some rails there because it didn't meet any of the safety standards. And because we were looking at probably having to sell the house, which is no longer happening, uh, but we did put the extra railings on there just to make it comply with safety codes. And we added a handrail, which we really didn't have before. So that was the deck project. It took a little while, but I think it was worth it. And it's still looking pretty good. One of our more exciting and favorite projects was getting a tractor. We bought the 2025R so that we could clean up this whole property. We had a lot of stuff to do on it. It's about two and a half acres and it has been a blessing. Let me tell you, it has been such a blessing to haul a bunch of trees and branches from way back there, cleaning up a bunch of brush and getting it all the way up to the front of the property. It has been wonderful and amazing. It's also very beneficial for mowing the yard, front and back and all the way back there. And it's great for cleaning up extra brush that we have from downfalls of storms. And then any future projects of building anything or constructing anything, this will be really helpful. And then there was the squirrel war. This house was inhabited by squirrels probably long before we got here. And we discovered it after we moved in. There were multiple points of entry. One of them was right there where the peak came down to the second roof there, right at the corner. There was another one on the other side over there where the other peak came down at the other edge of the house. There was one right up there, just behind this big pipe and the downspout up there on that little roof right there. There was actually two of those. And we actually captured some squirrels and traps there. And then there was another point of entry way up there, right next to the chimney, about three feet over where the two roofs come together like that. There was another point of entry. So I went up there and it took a long time to find all these, but I went up there, closed up every single one of them with hardware cloth and screws so that they can't get in. And then because we did the electrical system, that got rid of the electrical wire to the house. And that's how the squirrels were getting up there as they would climb up the pole, cross the wire, they're on, right? So now that that's gone, they can't get up there anymore. One of our viewers, Belle from Arizona. Hi, Belle. <laughs> sent us a do-it-yourself cactus kit and it is beautiful it is doing really well it loves the sunshine here and we get enough humidity to keep it happy most of the time i do check it every week to make sure but it is doing really well look how much it's grown it's very colorful and i love it the victorian electrical system that we talked about is still alive and well still sitting under this asbestos cover and full of fuses and knife switches. And yes, I could reach in there and shock myself. Totally not safe on a lot of different levels, but it's still working. There are still parts of the house that are still on this and they still need to be taken off. But the good news is we got rid of this clock timer here, which was doing nothing. And we were able to remove a lot of the circuits that were inside this cabinet here. Take a look fuses. This one here is completely empty. 
and it's ready to come off the wall. This one here still has a few circuits in it. More fuses. Isn't that lovely? So my goal is to finish up that work and get this done. When we bought this place, it had no laundry facilities whatsoever. So this is the space we decided to make our laundry room. We had to plumb in the water pipes. We had to plumb in the gas pipes. We had to put a vent out here. We had to do quite a bit, but it was so worth it. I love the space. It's working fantastic and it's easy access to everything. At one point we decided to spend a little money on the Victorian look and we bought some Victorian light bulbs. These are real carbon filament light bulbs and I call them toaster lights because they have the, the wires that go back and forth. But these are not LED, these are real true Edison style light bulbs made with the same technology from 120 years ago. If you saw our earlier videos, you'll remember this whole area was filled with gold carpet. There was gold carpet in the dining room, all behind me, all the way up the stairs, and it was nasty. Very thick, nasty carpet. But we got it all out, and we got all the padding out, and we were thrilled to find nice floors underneath, even in the dining room, up the stairway. So later in the future restoration, we will restore the floors and the stairs and make them all nice and pretty again. One of the things that we learned early on as we started restoring houses together is that we absolutely must have a clean sleeping quarters. Clean, fresh, and nice. And so before we moved into this house, we took the time to wash the walls, the ceiling, and we repainted this room in a little bit stronger color than what it had originally. Now, is it restored? No, it's renovated, but eventually we will restore it and bring it back to its original condition, but that's a project for another day. But for now, it makes a really nice master bedroom. At one point, we thought we were gonna have to sell the house. So this room got a full paint job. Now, there was already paint everywhere. Everywhere, I mean everywhere, <laughs> except the floors, but it was already painted. So what we did was we freshened it up and got it ready to sell. Thankfully, we did not have to sell. So yes, a future restoration, this paint will all be coming back off. But for now, at least it looks clean and fresh. This room here, which is Jeannie's future sewing room, has been getting a lot of our attention lately. We started by ripping off the yellow wallpaper and discovering that there was cracked old ratty plaster here. So we spent time, we restored the plaster, we restored the mantelpiece, which had paint on it, and lately we've been restoring this door right here. That turned out fantastic. But there's so much more work to do yet. Uh, we need to hang wallpaper, and we need to go up there and finish removing the paint from the ceiling and cleaning up the baseboards, the crown moldings, and even the windows. There is so much more work to do in here, but let me tell you what, this room, when the sun shines in here, is such a warm and happy place to be. I mean, it's incredible. I wish you could experience it for yourself. It's really coming together. The last thing we have to show you is changing this coat closet into a pantry. And let me tell you, it is a dream pantry. Mike built these shelves so they are so heavy duty sturdy. We can sit on them. It's incredible. <laughs> so it holds all of my jars because I am a very avid canner. I love canning. But this has been a dream pantry. I can't tell you how much I love it. <laughs> it turned out fantastic. That seems like a lot of stuff that we did in the past year, and it sure felt like it. Yes, it did. But the house is a much better place, it's more comfortable to live in, and it's headed down the road of being fully restored. A long ways to go, but we'll get there. Well, that concludes our video for this week, and uh, we will see you next week when we do something that we don't even quite know what we're going to do yet, but <laughs> we'll get there together. 
Thank you for watching 1834 Restoration House.